What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech. Sorry I haven't posted in two weeks. That's because I moved into a new home office slash office. And then I got the flu, which is always fun. But I'm settled in now and I feel a little bit better. And ordered the main logic board, which came in. I tried shopjimmy.com, they were out of stock. Electropartsonline.com, which was also out of stock. Those are my two main sources of uh, buying TV parts, TV boards, because they were reliable and they have a warranty, uh, good return policy. But uh, this time I had to go for a new, new company and when I ordered from a new company, uh, the part um, I got, I, I got the main logic board from TV Parts Today and uh, I'll leave a link in the video description below. But we're gonna see if this company is as reliable as shopjimmy.com and electropartsonline.com. We're also gonna find out if this TV is finally gonna be up and running. So just to recap what we're, how we're working on this TV, where we're at so far, um, I got some really good tips from David Nyler and also Rogue Dragon. And they said to find out if the power board or the main logic board is bad, what you want to do is first plug in the TV, see if you know what the symptoms are. As of right now, we have no power. Um, my first thought well, when I did my reading, and so I went ahead and tested the standby voltage, and so I put my red positive lead according to the chart right here. It's the third pin. That's my 5 volt line and my black negative lead on a ground source, which is the chassis of the TV. Then put my meter in my DC mode, in DC volt mode, and I noticed that I was getting 5 volts and then dropping down to zero, which to me was a bad capacitor. Well, usually, in most cases, a bad capacitor would cause the voltage to drop down to zero and then bounce, bounce up again to 5 volts. Or a voltage regulator would do that too and I thought it was on the power board. So without further troubleshooting, I didn't really confirm my conclusion. I just automatically went for, oh, let me order uh, the capacitors. So I, I went ahead and ordered the capacitors from shopjimmy.com and it had a repair kit, which is a common repair kit for this TV. And so I replaced all the parts and when you do that, instead of ordering the board, you can always return the board from ShopJimmy or ElectroPartsOnline.com. But when you order a TV repair kit, you can't return it and get your money back. Um, so I went ahead and ordered it. It was less than $20 and replaced the parts. Still had the same issue where the voltage dropped to zero. And so I got some really great tips from David Nyler and Rogue Dra Dragon. And they said what you could do is unplug the cable going to the main logic board and see if the TV turns on or the backlight turns on. And it does. Hey Google, turn off office lights. Sure, turn the lights off. And as you can see, the backlight does turn on without the cable. And the reason why is because the backlight circuit is built into the power board and it's connected to the inverter board right here on the side. So as soon as I plug in the cable from the power board to the main logic board, the TV shuts down. Boom. So, and then when you unplug it, the TV turns back on. So that's how I know that now it's the main logic board because, you know, the, the good tips that he gave me. I, I knew about that, but I, for some reason, I, I forgot it, I guess. And it's a really great tip, and I should have confirmed my, you know, conclusion on like, you know, where is the issue coming from? So because I already fixed the TV in the past with the back capacitors, I already jumped on that, and I already thought it was like I was pretty confident that it was that again. But as of right now, so far, what it looks like it's the main logic board. But I also gotten other tips from David Nyler and Rogue Dragon. They said unplug the TCOM board and see if the TV turns on. So we're gonna try that. I'm gonna unplug the TCOM board 
from the circuit. Actually, I'll unplug it from here. And the TCOM board is connected directly to the LCD panel. That's what gives you the picture on the screen, the display. All right, so let's go ahead and plug cable back in. See if the TV turns on. And it doesn't. And it hit power, nothing. So I don't think it's the TCOM board. I'll plug this again. Plug in the TCOM board. And now we're gonna unplug the control IO board and see if the TV turns on or my five volts drops. So let's go put my negative lead on a ground source, my positive lead, and according to the chart, it's the third one. All right, so I got my five volts and it still drops down to zero and it goes up to five volts again. So I don't think it's that. And then when I unplug the TCOM board, I got the same results. So I, I'm pretty sure it's the main logic board. It's bad. Here's the new um, new board, refurbished board from TV Parts Today. And I'm just gonna compare it because my mate, my mate Vince, another YouTuber, and he has a really great YouTube channel. You should check it out. But he recommended say, hey, get some readings from the new board that you purchased well, refurbished board I purchased from and see um, if it's any different so you go narrow it down so here I'm gonna go ahead and check the transistor there so I'm getting basically the same readings there on the IC 207 oh, 0.5 and point four. So that's actually good right here. On this one, I'm reading I'm reading a little bit different. Point five, which is the same as the other board. And this is point one. Which is interesting. I don't know if you can see that. I want you to see what I'm seeing. I don't know if you can read that. Let me zoom in actually. Here we go. So now you guys can see a little bit better. So I got checking the transistor. It looks like it's in line. Let's see. I'm reading 0.1. And then this is 0.5. And then I see or Q201. Here we go. 0.6 and 1.3. All right, so now I take the other board. We're not a schematic. I'm basically, you know, I'm shooting in the dark. 0.6. And basically you get pretty close to the same reading there. This reading I get a little bit different. 0.4. And this is 0.5, which looks good. And I don't see any Zener dial. I see resistors. I see capacitors. I don't see any Zener diodes. All right, let's just go ahead and plug in the board and see if it actually works. So uh, plug this, unplug that. If you want to always compare, all right, so make sure everything looks good. So it's right here. Everything matches up pretty good right there. And the board number, if you look at the board number, and the board number is BN41, BN41, uh, what is it? 01436E. This is 0136B. Wait, I, I think I ordered the wrong board. No, 
I ordered it using this number, the sticker number. And this is the board that popped up and I ordered. I hope this is the right board I ordered. Oh man, that would suck. All right, I hope to God this works. I really do. Come on TV parts today. Touch my fingers. Holy crap, I heard something jingle. Let's check the file. Oh, the standby light should be on. And I heard the jingle. I'm getting a little excited. Oh, and the five volts is steady. Boom, look at that. Solid as a rock. That's awesome. Oops, I had it on the wrong mode. <laughs> I almost fried my meter. Good thing it was a low voltage. I had to set it in the middle. All right, I'm gonna plug it in. It should turn on automatically. Let's see. We got TV. We got snowy picture because not, nothing's plugged in right now. TV source. Check all the inputs. Actually, I'm gonna plug in a fire stick, fire TV stick. There we go, plug that in, change the source. I think I have an HDMI 3. Uh, let's use the remote. It's not detecting. I should be detecting it. Let me double check. Oh, it just turned on and off. Why is it doing that? So we got Fire TV. Why is it turning on and off? I wonder if I got the wrong board. See, when I typed it in in um, TV parts today, I typed in using the sticker number, and then the board that came up was the board I ordered. And look at this. It's, it looks like it's too big. It makes me wonder if the board I got was the incorrect board. It doesn't seem like it's fitting in the screen. Hmm. And the TV turns off again. But when I got the board, the last digits was 1436. On this one, it says C, 1436C. On that board, it says 1436B. That could make a difference. And that could be the reason why the TV is turning on and off and the screen is too big. So I actually did order the right board. I found out on my receipt. Look at that. It says the board ending in 1436C. All the numbers match accordingly. And you look at the old board that came out of the TV, 1436C. It does match up the board I ordered. They just sent out the wrong board. They sent out 1436B, a different version. So I'm going to have to contact them and tell them to send me the correct board. So that's where we're at so far. Oh boy. I, I, I like this is supposed to be a part one video. <laughs> it's part four. Oh, I don't want a part four video. Anyway, if this video was informative and any of my tips or Rogue Dragon's tips or David Nyler's tips helped you, give me a thumbs up. Click on the share button if you know anyone that may be interested in TV repairs. And subscribe to Tampa Tech for more videos like this. And 
hit the bell notification for part four video to stay updated on that video. Yeah. So that's where we're at so far. Sorry guys, it's gonna be part four. This should have been a part one and that done. But anyway, thanks guys for watching. Later.